Okay, so firstly, looking at the organization of cells. So how are cells arranged in a multicellular organism? Unicellular, clonal, and multicellular organisms. So let's have a look. Unicellular, as I mentioned in the beginning, means that a cell literally exists on its own. Okay, it doesn't need other cells to exist with it. It can perform all its tasks on its own. It's um, quite simple. That means, and I'll get to why in a second, but just know unicellular means it lives by itself. Paramecium and bacteria are common examples of this. Okay, a lot of bacteria are unicellular. Then we have colonial, which are the next step up. Colonial means that they are still unicellular, except they live in a colony. Okay, why? Why would they live in a colony? Well, there's power in numbers. Okay, they're more powerful together than on their own. They're able to fend for each other um, besides having to fend for themselves. There are power in numbers. Okay, so Volvox, coral, jellyfish, all examples that do this, just as we can see here. Then we have multicellular, which is what we are. Multicellular means that many cells live together, but it's not a colony because those cells are communicating with each other and not just communicating, but sending each other's products to each other. So they're receiving different things from each other. This allows for the most complex forms of life. Why? Because we can get cells that are specialized. Let me explain. So in unicellular cells, the bacteria has to do everything for itself. It needs food, it needs to produce it for itself. It needs energy, it needs to produce it for itself. It needs to divide and make more of itself. It has to do that by itself. Every single thing it has to do by itself. However, Multicellular cells, they'll be focused on kind of all the generic jobs, but then really focused on performing one kind of task really, really well. Like your heart cells. Your heart cells are responsible for pumping the heart, right? Doing everything involved in heart function. Where bacteria cells, they don't have that kind of specialty. They don't have an organ that they need to contribute to. Multicellular cells do. The benefit of that is then, okay, each cell can't exist on its own because they all need to be communicating to each other and they're dependent on other cells giving them stuff. But they're able to become whole complex organisms like us. We're able to have a heart because multicellular cells will start forming into an organ. We're able to have a liver, kidneys, skin, right? Multicellular. So, um... All right, so uh, just to recap, cells can either be prokaryotic or eukaryotic, as we know. Um, cells carry out all the metabolic processes to, st to sustain life. We have low operational efficiency um, in unicellular cells, uh, meaning that they have a simple structure and their lack of organelles does limit the efficiency of carrying out metabolic processes at any given time. So that's for unicellular cells in particular, as we know. Um, unicellular prokaryotes are less efficient than unicellular eukaryotes, as we know, because they're more simplistic. Their features, they have a directly, they are directly exposed to the external environment and therefore they have a functioning cell membrane. Um, they have a high surface area to volume ratio due to their microscopic size, so that increases their efficiency. And they're not overly specialized, meaning that all cells will at least have a genome with genetic information and ribosomes. Okay, as I said, they'll be, they'll kind of cover all the bases and have, um, yeah, a whole genome with genetic information and ribosomes in them. It's not spread out across many cells. They're not specialized. They have to perform all the tasks for themselves. Okay, colonial organisms, as we said, they form colonies and they're connected and interdependent. However, all these cells could otherwise work independently to carry out the functions for life, like Volvox. Okay, as I mentioned, they're not specialized um, and they're the bridge between unicellular and multicellular organisms in terms of evolution. And their close proximity to each other, like we see here, allows for nutrients to be shared throughout. Multicellular, as I said, they're specialized. We have the division of labor. So lungs are responsible for something, the heart's responsible for something, so on and so forth. Um, yes, I think I've covered all of this. Cool, okay. Now let's have a look at the hierarchical structure of organization of multicellular organisms. So we have organelles, 
and then the organelles together form a cell. So we have a mitochondria, ribosome, Golgi apparatus, all of those together, then they form a cell, then those cells form tissues, then those tissues together start to form organs, and then we have an organ system, and then we have an organism, okay? Um, yeah, that's kind of the sequence that um, multicellular organisms exist in. Okay, so let's have a look at tissues, organ systems, and cell differentiation and specialization. So there is a difference between cell differentiation and cell specialization. So cell differentiation is the process by which a less specialized cell changes to become a specialized type of cell. So for example, a blood cell, blood stem cell differentiating into a red blood cell. So a blood stem cell can become a white blood cell or a red blood cell. It differentiates into a red blood cell. That is cell differentiation. Cell specialization is the specific function a cell has determined by their physiology and cellular structure. So for example, Red blood cells are specialized um, with hemoglobin molecules to carry oxygen. So the way they're basically built to perform their function. So red blood cells um, have hemoglobin on them and hemoglobin is what's carrying the oxygen on the red blood cell. So to kind of summarize that, cells differentiate to allow them to develop structures and therefore become specialized to carry out the cells. So as we saw with the red blood cell, the red blood cell first needed to differentiate, sorry, a blood stem cell needed to differentiate into a red blood cell. So then it could specialize um, to carry, be specialized to carry out the function of carrying oxygen around the body. Okay. Embryonic cells are stem cells. Okay. Um, they can be specialized or undifferentiated into anything because they are unspecialized and undifferentiated. Okay, so we can make them unspecial, sorry, specialized and differentiated. Um, all our cells are embryonic stem cells when we begin as an embryo, hence the name. As the embryo though starts growing and cells start to divide, these cells give rise to new cells, so they become differentiated and then specialized. Once they mature, they develop structural changes for their specialized functions. They can differentiate into all types of cells. And although these only exist in embryos, adult stem cells can be found in places such as bone marrow. Okay, structure and function. So specific cells may have a particular structural or may have, sorry, particular structural features to allow them to perform their functions more easily. So um, red blood cells are more flattened and elongated to allow them to have a higher surface area to volume ratio so things can diffuse across that membrane really easily. Um, with, they have more biochemical processes um, to have more efficient yeah, exchange of materials, as I said. Um, lungs have a squamous, have squamous cells, um, which means, again, they're flattened to allow for diffusion. Um, blood cells also have the biconcave shape, okay? Um, this increases surface area to volume ratio again so that they can diffuse things really easily. But also for the teeny tiny capillaries, it means that they can bend as they go through the capillaries, okay? Because um, capillaries are really small. Um, okay, tissues now. Tissues are a group of cells, so we're working our way up the hierarchy. When We're now at tissues, which is a group of cells which work together to perform a specific function. So in animals, we have muscle tissue, um, it makes up muscles. The structure, it's composed of myocytes, which you don't need to know, but just for your own um, interest, it's composed of myocytes, uh, which are elongated cells, and the function of muscle tissue is to help with movement, okay? Plants have xylem tissue, which makes up xylem. Um, its structure is it's made, made of tracheids. You don't need to know that either, um, but you do need to know that it's responsible for water flow. Okay, xylem tissue. Okay, moving, continue, if we continue moving up the hierarchy, we're now at organs. Organs is a structure which is composed of a number of tissues which work together to perform a shared function. So we have the heart. The heart is made of cardiac, connective, blood, and nervous tissue. It pumps blood throughout the circulatory system, so it's made of different tissues. The stem of a plant is made of epidermis, vascular, and ground tissues. It transports water and nutrients between the roots and the leaves. Organ systems now. 
Um, so organ systems are a structure which is composed of a number of tissues which work together to perform a shared function. So like the circulatory system, okay? Circulatory system doesn't just refer to the heart, it refers to the lungs and all the other veins, um, arteries and capillaries around the body. Its purpose is to pass blood to all the cells in the body and specifically to deliver oxygen to the different organs of the body. That can be contrasted with the vascular system in plants, which isn't so much so to transport blood and oxygen around the body, but to transport nutrients and water around the body um, through the xylem tissue and the phloem tissue. So xylem transports water, phloem transports food and nutrients. Okay, so that's basically... Um, the different hierarchy we would next arrive at humans um, but i'm sure we know what a human is um all right moving on